And we are back. And we just finished 2004's Christmas with the Cranks. Rated PG with a runtime of one hour and 39 minutes. As we get into the holiday season, I wanted to pick a Christmas movie, but I had no idea that this was going to be such a divisive choice. (laughs) (laughs) This is the story of the Cranks, played by Tim Allen as Luther and Jamie Lee Curtis as Nora. Two parents who, at the beginning of the film, are driving their daughter to the airport as she does a, I guess, Peace Corps stunt. Stint. Stint. (laughs) (laughs) In Peru. uh, Right around the holidays. And the husband decides, hey, Since we're sort of empty nesters, let's go on a cruise and skip Christmas. Much to the chagrin of neighbors and the community. And the people at work. Everybody. Everyone has their own Everybody was so far up these people's butts. It was ridiculous. I'm going to go around this. (laughs) (laughs) Gee, I'm going to start with you. What did you think of this film? This movie is a straight zero. Don't ever watch this film ever. (laughs) Really? Why did you hate it so much? Talk no likable characters. The movie was stupid, and it it was like an hour. It was less than two hours, and it felt like it was three. I hated the pacing. I hated the stories. I hated the characters. There wasn't anything good about this film. Wow. Yeah, I agree. No likable characters at all. I wouldn't say it's a zero. There were some <laughs> production values in there, and, but... Good lord. We didn't like Luther's... It's a tur- solid one. <laughs> Maybe that's where it is. What did you think, Olive? This movie was pretty bad. Like, this was, like, bad. Not not your one of your favorite Christmas movies, I'm guessing? Oh, my God. This was horrible. The people were obnoxious and stuff. Yeah. And like the and like Gracie's right, the pacing on this story was like it felt so long. It really did. Why is that? I mean, it's 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 a movie from the two thousands. I mean, I didn't think I didn't I didn't I mean, rage hate it like, like everybody like, else at this table, but like chronologically, it's not a long movie. You said it's an hour and a half, right? An hour and thirty nine minutes. Yeah, so like a little over an hour and a half. This really, this film is proof that like time is relative because. I felt like we were sitting there for three days. Like it was, all right. It was it torture to sit through exaggerate. this movie. That's not even exaggerating at this point. It, this was it, torture. It just felt just just sitting through event after event that's supposed to be funny. That's just not. It's just cringy. Yeah, this was supposed to be a comedy. I don't remember yeah. laughing. Yeah, I didn't laugh. We didn't. I did not laugh once. The Oh, uh, he stepped on the cat's tail. <laughs> oh, he got Botox in his face. <laughs> oh, the she bumped her head on the tanning bed. Oh, now the priest sees them in bikinis. It's none of this was even remotely amusing. It really wasn't. And then we're are we supposed to be amused by the way the the neighborhood reacts to hearing these people aren't celebrating Christmas? Yeah, that was literally the worst That's part dis- of the film. Just disturbing. I mean, it, it was just annoying. Everybody was so goddamn annoying. <laughs> Seriously. The, the, the people, I mean, who were we supposed to root for in this? You're rooting for the spirit of Christmas. No, this this is just <laughs> terrible. I don't know what I, I I don't know whose side I was supposed to be on. Everybody Marty's. was just terrible. Marty, Why oh Marty, the the mystery man Marty, who seriously I I came up with a better plot uh, as far as Marty went than yeah. than they ever did. Wait, what was your plot? Oh, that, that he thing. shows up with the Christmas ham, the the elusive Christmas ham, and hands it to Tim Allen. And Tim Hallen takes it and then sees it's basically covered in blood because Marty got it from the lady who stole it from Jamie Lee Curtis at the supermarket. And he basically butchered everybody they to make their Christmas. They should have Marty going back to his apartment, <laughs> opening the freezer, and there's just like a collection of <laughs> severed heads in there. There you go. <laughs> God bless us, everyone. You know? But that would have been a better... some some. 
they 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 do a nicety for some deranged serial killer, and he makes their Christmas party a success that people talk about for years. God bless Marty the serial killer. This is based on a John Grisham book called Skipping Christmas. John Grisham, uh, stick to the thrillers because uh, <laughs> comedy ain't your strong suit. <laughs> Wow. All right. So three quarters of the table hated this, this film. But I mean, it was it, was it that John Grisham? Yeah. It's like the guy, the, the guy who's like writing Pelican brief and Pelican all that. And all that. Yeah. Good Lord. So what could have made this better? Don't make, this I just film. told you I have more <laughs> killer that helps everybody <laughs> that helps this family that showed him like one act of kindness. There you go. That's that's what they got right with that uh, Violent Night movie, the violence. Yeah. Oh, Violent Night was excellent. Yeah, compared to this, absolutely. Yeah. I'm not even. Gonna, oh my god, I'm not they, they don't even like fall in the same plane. Yeah, <laughs> Santa's got his giant hammer. <laughs> <laughs> and it knows how to use it. Um, originally he had a giant axe, right? <laughs> I think it was always a hammer, wasn't yeah, it? I think it was yeah, I really? Because I, I thought he had an axe called like Skull Crushers. So no, that was that was the hammer. Yeah, the hammer. The hammer that was, was a, called Skull. Oh Crusher. right, because if he lined up like ten people, <laughs> they would like their heads would all like explode if he hit them with the hammer. <laughs> yeah, I think he like wielded a an axe, but then he found a hammer. Yeah, I think he so found an axe in the movie. Yeah. So, yeah. so right, we're not talking about. <laughs> <laughs> if I take a poll of this table, this is not a good holiday comedy. Hell no, no, no. There's nothing heartwarming. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that you're supposed to feel like, oh, well, Tim Allen has just learned the meaning of Christmas and giving and being selfless because of what happens at the very end of the movie. It's too late. Yeah, it's too late. He's. It's just sort of like a pointless gesture because it, it, he couldn't use the, the vacation anyway. So he's like, yeah, yeah, I'll give it to the people across the street who look all sad and who couldn't come to our party because of the snow, even though they live right across the street and the snow is, I mean, Dewey from Malcolm in the Middle is riding his freaking bike in it. So right, it's not right. clearly not well, that he's a bad. young boy. I mean, if, if, so, if, if Emmett Walsh, M. Emmett Walsh falls in, Bust something. You had a thousand be- people at that party. People couldn't go over to help them walk across the street. <laughs> across not. a street. It wasn't even like they were down the block. They were across the street. Uh, Would you rather And clearly she's not that sick if they're gonna if they're gonna go on a Caribbean cruise for ten days. Would you rather watch this or the Christmas Car- Chronicles with the uh- I would rather watch the Christmas Chronicles. Yeah, seriously. Really? Yeah. Santa brainwashed everyone. <laughs> Where Santa, Santa brainwashes everybody and controls, <laughs> basically controls all of reality for his like bizarre amusement. whims. Yeah, his amusement. <laughs> yeah, that he's was like Q uh, from Star Trek. He's just, <laughs> that was better than this. People, people don't have if any I'm, will. If I'm being honest, the whole like uh, the old lady across the street having cancer, I thought that that was made up so that the. Um, the cranks would like participate in Christmas. They'd like try and guilt trip them since it was her last one. Yeah, I mean, it, it kind of felt shoehorned in there. Oh, this this might be her last Christmas. Yeah, 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 I don't get why. I honestly, why did they put that in the film? Yeah, like it. They needed something for Tim Allen to react to, I guess. Yeah, yeah, something to pull the heartstrings, I guess. Yeah, I guess it doesn't really do anything like you could just say that they're old like oh you guys are close yeah. to death i'll give uh, you this that's true they could have just said they were old yeah she didn't really need to have cancer yeah, she didn't to need to have cancer all right i'm gonna go around the table and i'm going to ask everyone to tell me instead of christmas with the cranks what they would recommend if somebody said to you hey i want to watch a christmas movie which one would you want to watch or which one would you recommend that I watch? So I'm going to start and I'm going to nominate It's a Wonderful Life because that is yeah. not only such a great Christmas movie, but it's such a feel good movie. It's always been one 
if not my favorite, it I, might be my favorite film. I think it always restores my faith in humanity, and it's such a lovely message. Here's this man who feels overwhelmed by his life and his circumstances, has this incident happen to him, not his own, not by his own making, it was Uncle Billy, right? Uncle Billy screwed up. Screwed up again. But George is going to sacrifice himself, and then... People find out, people that he's lived with and this community gather around and help him in the last minute. And of course, that scene at the end where the brother toasts and says, to my brother, the richest man in Bedford Falls. I mean, that always gets to me. I love that scene. Yeah. So I I mean, they did that film right because you care about George Bailey. Throughout the whole movie, you yeah. care about. Yeah, him. there's not a scene where he's like unlikable. Even when, like when he's struggling, you don't like hate on him. It's because he's you understand that he's having a rough time. Yeah, but yeah. he never gives up. Well, at the beginning, yeah. he sort of gets that. But th- but he he um his faith is restored. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. And in spite of that, he realizes that it is a wonderful life, even with the bumps and and mm-hmm. the trials and the tribulations. All right, I'm gonna ask you if you could recommend a Christmas film. I'm also I will also allow Die Hard if anybody wants to nominate. It's a that. film that takes place during Christmas. It's not yeah. a Christmas movie. I, I would still categorize it as a Christmas. Film. All right, go ahead. The What's only thing nomination? being given out in Die Hard is bullets. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> a good Christmas movie. I mean, a Christmas story. Ah, I love excellent. a Christmas story. I saw that when I was a little kid with my dad and my sister when we were going to buy the tree. And it was just brilliant. I love that story. Little kid just hoping and praying to get that stupid gun. <laughs> and yes, like sure I am. all the shenanigans that ensue. Another film where you care about the characters. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's a great story. Yeah. And I, I like the home feeliness. It's it's told through narration. Yeah, that guy's voice. is amazing, yeah. yeah. And just, yeah, Ralphie and his little adventures with his little silly Ralphie, gang of kids. Randy and, and Schwartz. Yeah. And Scott Farkas. Farkas. <laughs> what about you, G? You have a nomination? Yep. Um, the, there's that animated movie, Klaus. That I really oh, like. Oh, that, oh, was, that good. was really good too. Yeah, yeah with the uh, Jason Schwartz. I didn't think I would like that, but it, it, was, it was excellent. Good. J.K. Simmons JK, was. Oh, well, J.K. Yeah. Simmons. Yep. Was yeah, yeah. He I know. liked the story and the animation, and I didn't dislike the characters. It was very good, and it was so much better than this film. <laughs> <laughs> so instead of this watching was... this one, watch Klaus. Klaus. That's a really good movie. All right. What about you, Olive G? Do you want to nominate something? Do you have any ideas? Uh, well. Uh, it's a tiebreaker between A Fit Christmas. Oh, oh that, that was a good one, one that too. That was a good one, too. Yeah. Very and reminiscent of a Christmas story. <laughs> yeah, that's very reminiscent. Yeah. yeah. Any Hallmark Channel movie <laughs> with seven <laughs> musical numbers that makes your ears bleed each Ugh. and every single time. <laughs> All you don't it. really have all to allowed. care to enjoy it. You know what? That's I like how it's just any Hallmark because they're all basically <laughs> the same. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we should have done the Hallmark experience. I think that's what we should have done instead of, you know what? And wasn't that originally my idea? I said we should do a Hallmark movie. Honestly, 24 hours we probably should have. Yeah. It no, it's not too late. It's we not could, too we late. Could, we could it's still shoehorn it in there. December. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to go around the table and get numbers because uh, we should probably wrap this up because I feel like there's nothing to say here. I think Nothing good to say. I think either you're going to like it or you're going to hate it. I didn't hate it, but it wasn't well, a what, great film. What did you like about it? I mean, I found, I found that it was kind of silly and kind of cutesy. It's... It, it's not a movie that's going to make you think. It's not a movie that's going to change your life. It's not going to make you smarter or illuminate something. It's just mindless, silly entertainment. They should have gotten a divorce. <laughs> Did you like any of the characters? I mean, I'm not a big fan of Tim Allen, but he didn't bother me in this. And I, I kind of liked that at the end, he sort of has this, this epiphany and he realizes that he's blessed. He's got this lovely house. He's got this lovely wife. He's got this lovely daughter. He's 
somewhat young. He'll have a long life, and yet juxtaposed to the neighbors across the street where they're older, one of them has a terminal, possibly terminal illness. And I think he realizes in that minute that he's lucky, kind Mm -hmm. of. I mean, it's not as impactful as It's a Wonderful Life, obviously, but I think that... It's sweet. I mean, it's not It's not winning any awards. It's not the best script on the planet. But I don't think it's terrible. I think that if you want something Christmassy that you can play for a younger audience or an older audience, I don't think that there's anything objectionable here. The, the gags are pretty predictable and silly. I and mean, it's rated PG, isn't it? Yeah. Like, it's not even PG-13. It's just PG. PG. Yeah. But there wasn't anything like objectionable here there was not anything that would like scar a younger viewer or upset an older audience member yeah yeah no could it was watch it was this. very it was very mild even, yeah. even the slapstick even humor. the slapstickiness of it yeah they made sure to indicate that the cat did not die when it was frozen into a solid block <laughs> what did you think at the end of the uh the special effects the snowman that was weird <laughs> That was horrifying. That was That's when I would see my nightmares, mommy. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't really a uh, top tier. No. Yeah. Plus, I mean, his arm looked jacked, too. It was yeah. like Schwarzenegger. <laughs> <laughs> what number would you give it? All right. I guess uh, from one to ten, I would give this a six. I think it's a. I think it's. I think it's better than average. It's not great, but I think that if you're looking for something for the holidays that you can again watch with your family and isn't objectionable, doesn't try to preach anything or instill any values into you. I think this is definitely just mindless entertainment, even if it's something that you want to put on in the background just for whatever, at your holiday party. Uh, I would give this a three. Wow. Yeah, I did not like this movie at all. <laughs> I, I, usually in a film like this, there's some amusing characters, somebody that you like, Somebody whose story you're interested in. I didn't like Luther. I didn't like Nora. I hated everybody in the neighborhood. Spike. Uh, he was annoying. Oh, Dewey. Yeah, poor Dewey. Bad, bad film choice. What? Dan Aykroyd's character. Dan Aykroyd. Uh, just you know, everybody. I hated the entire neighborhood. I but hated. He was dressed. Why was he dressed like it was the fifties? I think he was supposed that he was supposed to be like a guy who. Basically, never evolved since then. Uh, With his Americana yeah, tree, yeah, and and so everybody at his office, it was everybody was just just despicable. I hated everybody. <laughs> I don't know about despicable. <laughs> easy, easy. You're All exaggerating right, that. Well, despicable in that Marty. Marty was the only good person in the thing, but I didn't really care about him either. There wasn't enough. There, there wasn't enough uh, story there. Yeah. All right, Jay, what do you think? One to ten. Frat party. Two. Two. Actually, wait. Um, the 1.5. Wow. Brutal. Oh, that's cruel. brutal. Because you said six and then dad said three, so it's like half, half. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so X would just keep going down. I yeah. guess. You should give it a 0. 0.75. Wow. <laughs> what about. 0. 0.75. <laughs> <laughs> Showing up so their I math hated skills. This movie. 0. 0.75, 1.5, 3, and a 6. I yeah. guess. I guess the masses have spoken and stay away from <laughs> Christmas with the cranks. Not worth your time. But if you are looking for a holiday alternative, absolutely, absolutely check out It's a Wonderful Life. A Christmas Story. Klaus. If a Christmas or a horrible homework movie. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you might be better off. And that's it from us. And we will bid you all a... Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.